Hello loves, I'm going to have another opportunity to share with you my experience, knowledge, wisdom, the essential process. Yes, are you a narcissist? That's the question for today. Let's talk about it. Uh, Till Swan uploaded 14 hours ago her article on COVID-19 and she puts it very simply, a manifestation of narcissism. And when you, if you haven't watched the Why COVID-19 video, which talks about Sheila Macbeth intuitive downloading information of the mental form of diseases and how they come to physical manifestation, which I'm a strong believer, I already say that, I'm a very strong believer of this because as an awakened being, you realize that your thoughts create your reality and so thoughts and emotions, anything that one has with inside will physically manifest externally or on the body and so disease is, is part of that. So I was like, oh my gosh, I read it and I was like, she, no wonder she's Till Swan because she can put it so simply where people can just be like, oh, it's narcissism. And so I want to talk about narcissism today because the other video wasn't talking about narcissists. It was talking about the belief system. And so if if you understand that it's self-righteousness, that people think that one species is superior over the other, then your belief system will trigger that mental form and it's going to be like your thought form. You align yourself to that vibration and then you uh, physically manifest that thought form, which is a coronavirus. And I already gave you some hints of like how to go about, you know, protecting your power in regards to coronavirus. And this one is bringing more attention of being so uh, a narcissist. And yes, this is, we are egos. We are egos. We have to realize the ego's here to allow us to manifest. Without the ego, we would just be, like we would just be like non-existent, just pure energy. There's nothing to hold us uh, down, right? From, from learning from this dimension. Uh, so we have a bit of self-narcissism or narcissism within our within our sides. It just depends on the degree in which we are fall on. Uh, for example, like me creating these videos is a bit narcissist because I'm talking to myself on a video. However, the intention is always to use the ego as a way to communicate to humanity, to raise a vibration, to find a way to remember their power essentially, right? As, as an awakened being, as a who you are in this, this grand scheme of things. And so let's talk about it, right? Okay, so first... Um, it's really interesting. If you haven't read the article, she's gonna, I think, upload a video soon, but I read the article because I was like, I'm very interested in her perspective because it's great. Read it. Great. We'll probably talk about some good points on there because she talks about how, uh, it's so good. I can't believe I didn't think about it. I was like talking about, you know, the spiritual meaning of disease or the, the mental form of the disease and it just never came to me that it was like also known as narcissist. So I'm gonna read you everything that's in like bold because essentially that's what's important. So what those who do, who see, wait, what those of us who see the pain of this boiling water of separation uh, can do is to become the, that warmth. She's talking about a metaphor of like a frog being in boiling water. It will stay in boiling water until it dies pretty much. Um, to be the one to speak first, to be the one to smile, to be the one to act in a manner that relieves the tension of others' fear, to act in the best entrance uh, of nature itself. That is the response to the fear of, of, of the outbreak of the COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Because she says if there is no warmth, people need the warmth of each other. And she talks about how she talks about that. So today the world is boiling in water of fear. COVID-19 outbreak has become the tipping point for the human psyche with regards to this fear. Uh, which is so... Like, it's very interesting because uh, even in Japan, you notice this. Like, they're a community. However, they are still, like, out for themselves. It's so very interesting how that works out. Okay, let me get you some other ones. So, of course, we're dealing with fear. Like, already, you loves already are aware that it's in regards to fear. Okay. Uh, all I wish to reflect to you about that before I continue is how easily fear can open the door for people to control you in whatever direction suits their own best interests. If fear puts you in a state to want to be told what to do, and you know here at the Rainbow Love Community, that's not the gig, that's not what we're doing. We want you to be in your power. We want to remind you of your sovereignty and the power that's within you, the infinite divine energy loves. So yes, fear will dictate, oh, wash your hands for 20 minutes, for 20 seconds. Uh, fear will, people will dictate you what to do, what not to do. Things like this, uh, you have to remind yourself to, to, to not allow fear control you. Um, let me see what else. Right, each and every one of you has a power relative to how you respond to the situation, right? It's all about reaction. It's all about, this is all goes 
this all goes back to reclaiming your power. And I think I made a video in February or in, actually in March talking about how uh, being reactive and playing on the fourth dimension rules, being conscious of that, uh, or will make you unsafe and delusion and take steps for, okay. So the definition of a safe relationship is, okay. Uh, it's a relationship in which we take someone else's best interest as part of our own best interest. So when, when we are in fear and thus in self-preservation mode, this is precisely what we are not doing. And so by definition, we ourselves become unsafe to others. This causes other people to go into self-preservation mode relative to us. Right, it's called about self-protection, narcissism, that goes into narcissism. Fear is neither good nor bad. It is information, information about potential of the reality that is simply unwanted, of course. Uh, we make very different decisions out of love than out of fear, which of course, mm -hmm. uh, Okay, okay. Um, yeah, it is, it is really interesting. The most important thing you can do as an individual which will change the way you respond to anything you fear is to take that which you see as other as part of yourself and by doing so to take their best interest as part of your own best interest. So it just deals about uh, narcissism. We all know that narcissism, we all think about ourselves and uh, when we're in a situation like this, we always think about oneself versus other, uh, other people. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the, the mental form of narcissism. So narcissism falls under mental illness. So a mental illness uh, as like a thought form, right, reflects our inability or unwillingness to live life with a high enough level of emotional and behavioral wisdom to prevent inner chaos and harmful activities. Being able to know whether we have had a spiritual experience or are suffering mental illnesses can help us stay on track with our spiritual development. And then she's like, it is spiritual experience or mental illness. Okay, that's typically what she describes that the idea of a mental illness, right? It reflects our inability or unwillingness to live life with a high enough level of emotional behavioral wisdom to prevent inner chaos and harmful activities. And with this being said, uh, I mean, aggressive anxiety disorder, bipolar disorder, aggressive passive disorder, manic phase, borderline personality, chronic confusion, depression, multi-personality, narcissism, paranoia, schizophrenia. These are all mental illnesses that you know, it's in regards to having an inability to, uh, you know, see emotional wisdom or whatever. You get it. Yeah, you're not dumb. <laughs> okay, so the cool part. Now, let's go to narcissism. We're becoming aware of this. love. That's the idea, becoming aware of this. And that's the first step, becoming aware. Uh, okay, so narcissism. <sighs> I haven't read this one yet, so this is my first reaction. You're going to see it. So narcissism. Belief that everything is all about me. Everyone is thinking about me, that me is always correct, and anyone who disagrees is a threat to be destroyed, shouted down, or publicly ridiculed. Belief that is not enough to win. Everyone else has to lose. Chronic refusal to give others a chance to express their thoughts and feelings. The pattern often leads to isolation as a few people want to be around someone who is unwilling to listen, share the spotlight, or give credit to another. However, if the narcissist happens to hold a position of power or authority, many are only too eager to forgo their personal needs and sell out in favor of self-promotion. And then it talks about self-importance, which we're gonna go and talk about self-importance. So self-importance is the foundation of narcissism, right? So you have thought and attitude. That is what composes a self-importance. So self-importance is belief that we are more deserving of attention than others and that everything that happens to us is the utmost importance to everyone can be the belief that our beliefs are flawless and, or that everything that happens, be it at an experience or even a conversation, is about us. Holding self is very high regard. Pride and conceit are offshoots of ego and self-importance. Self-importance and self-condemnation often go hand in hand because even if we feel proud of some of our accomplishments, we may also be ashamed of some of our words and actions. Chronic flatulence and vertigo are some of the physical effects of self-importance. And then, uh, of course, you're having uh, narcissism. Okay, so this is so interesting, right? I find this to be very interesting. One thing, of course, when we talk about this, I always want to share some type of pearl of wisdom or my experience with narcissism. And I worked in a corporation where, of course, you, as corporations, as you study corporations, you are essentially working with a lot of uh, sociopaths or psychopaths because that's that's how the world works. I mean, you gotta 
I mean, that's the tea. That's the tea. And there's nothing wrong with it. Right? Uh, narcissist, I don't think I've met a narcissist or been around a narcissist that it's all about them. I don't know. I'm not sure. This has never have, never have come up to me. However, in situations like this, I, in my perspective, in my experience, what I would do is uh, forgive. Forgive the narcissist. Uh, of course, these people in Japan, they took all the toilet paper. Like, first it was mask. I was like, okay, mask. Okay, fine. Then they took out the toilet paper and I was like, what is going on with the toilet paper? Like, they were having problems with toilet paper here in Japan and Tokyo. Like, there was a shortage on toilet paper. I was like, what is going on? Why are people, like, taking toilet paper? Uh, of course, that's, that's obvious. However, you know, leaving no toilet paper for some people and then taking them for themselves, of course, it is something they are scared to do. That's people who are reacting to the coronavirus in a fearful manner and being controlled in that aspect are in the realm of narcissism, right? So they're in the spectrum of narcissism. So we have to forgive them. Okay, you took out the toilet paper. I'll be fine. I'll find some toilet paper somewhere else. I'll get some tissues. I'll try not to poop. <laughs> but you have to see it as, oh, well, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to self-persevere, preserve, self-preserve yourself. Uh, and uh, you're thinking about yourself versus thinking about someone else. And that's totally fine. And I totally agree. That's where you want to experience this, this epidemic, this fear. That's how you're, that's how you're reacting. And you, we can't be mad. Now, uh, if I didn't have toilet paper and I got mad, oh my gosh, these Japanese people are like so like scared and like blah, 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 this and blah, 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 that. Like, yeah, that's me reacting and me judging Japanese people. However, we're not here in the Rainbow Love community to judge people in their narcissistic behaviors. We're not here to judge the governments. We're not here to judge people in power who are deciding to, you know, quarantine America. You know, people, this is a good example. If, if let's say narcissists are running the country, right? Sociopaths. Uh, then they're like, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna quarantine entire America. People can get mad and react and be unforgiving and judging. That makes no sense. Why are we doing this, et cetera, et cetera. And you're feeding into the fear. You're, f you're feeding into the entire gameplay. And what Teal Swan was talking about was it, taking that part of yourself, taking that other and making it yourself. Meaning, you know what? I've been in positions where I was mad at the government. I was mad at decisions made that I had no power over. However, the power relies in the choice that we have within ourselves to react to the situation. So I'm not gonna get mad. I'm gonna continue to do what I do and we'll see how uh, I can go around this, this thing, right? Um, or how it will come or change, right? Which, I mean, it should, it should, uh, but that's the idea, right? Not to get mad at the narcissist making decisions for us or trying to control us. We should forgive them for, for being in fear because they don't know, they don't know better. They don't know that they are thinking about themselves versus others. And, you know, I would love to help people here, but like, People in Japan are like so like hypersensitive. They're very, very sensitive human beings. I think one of the most emotionally sensitive people, they are aware of the energies, very subtle energies they notice. Uh, and so like, you, you can't touch them. You can't like, for example, I, I don't think I'd said this, I think I said this story before, but uh, I was going to school one day and I saw my teacher that I was going to school to work with. And you know, I was like in the morning and I touched her, I touched her elbow because as an American, you're like, oh, hi, you touched, you know, you're like touch and touch. You know? She literally freaked out. Like she, I've never seen, like she saw a ghost. Like she turned around and, and was so shocked that I like touched her in public in her elbow. And then she started smiling, whatever, but then she was like telling me indirectly not to touch people because, you know, you're in the workplace and then people touch something and then she was trying to spill some tea or whatever about the principal touching teachers and the teacher not liking it and sexual harassment or whatever. But we weren't at school, so that makes sense to me. <clears throat> and this was not even, be this was like prior to the uh, outbreak of, uh, of this uh, disease. So that's just an example of someone who I was working with at the time for a couple of months and she freaked out. And a lot of people don't help each other here in Japan. It's like, you gotta help yourself. Uh, and if you have problems, figure it out yourself. And that's the very like energy of Japan. And that's something I've learned uh, to mold, which is very interesting. But yeah, so now being aware, I totally ask you, I'll probably put the link of the Till Swan's uh, article here for you love, so you can check it out. Cause she definitely goes more she goes into shadow work, which is really cool, but I definitely, her her message resonates with me and I wish I can articulate my message that way. 
<laughs> but I just want to say, just take a deep breath. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, uh, love. Exhale, fear. And just stay, just tell yourself, I do not give power to anything that's external from me. I do not give any power. And that allows you to have like a boundary, like have a protection boundary. And I already talked about this. Inhale, love. Exhale, fear. Inhale, forgiveness. Exhale, judgment. We are in a place that fear is really out there. And how we react to fear is the main importance. It's the, the action that we do in regards to fear, what we say in regards to fear of the COVID. It's the way we think of others and ourselves in regards to this. It's all have to do with that. And so I just want you loves to become aware of that. I don't wanna tell you anymore, but if you would like some guidance or would like to know how to forgive others because sometimes you don't know how to forgive others, email me, message me. I can definitely give you a consultation. You're not alone. And uh, hopefully this, this video has shined some light on that aspect. So. All right, I will feel you later.